So anyway, um, that's what I've learned. And like I said, um, I have their skeptics out there, rightfully so. But we'll see if my research pans out and it works. And if it does, I, you know, I, I did a lot of research on Google trying to figure this out. And there was no source that really gave definitive answers like this. Um, so um, how did I get um, answers from Amazon employees? Well, you, you know, if you go in, here's how I did it. I went into an order and I went contact the vendor. And in some cases, they send a message to the third party vendor. In other cases, if they handle the shipping for the vendor, you'll get transferred to a, um, like a bot, chat bot. I mean, it's, it's automated, it's not a person for Amazon. And if you dig through there and um, answer enough questions, it'll eventually lead to there, at the bottom of the screen, there's a picture of a face, and you tap on that, and it connects you to a real person. And it's like, I think it transfers you to the customer care center, and one of the options is to have someone call you. But if you want to talk to someone now, it says it chat. So I did that three times with three different orders, asking very pointed questions about the <coughs> United States Postal Service and my general delivery address. And um, the first time, the, um, the, the person was very nice and they, they put me on it. They said, I, I need to research this. They put, they waited, I had to wait five minutes or so and they came back and they said, it is an automatic process and you will be fine, it will be USPS. Then the next two, I you know, went through the same thing with and both of them transferred me in um, the, the chat um, to a higher level person. And uh, both of those people in those two separate sessions for two session orders, three orders in total, um, eventually came back and said, yes, given the way you've put in your shipping address, it will automatically pick the postal service. So we'll see if that's actually true. That, that'll be exciting. But I'm telling you how much I'm enjoying um, this area in New Mexico in general. Um, the only thing that could make it better is if there were some friends around camping near me. Um, I, I'll figure out a way next year to, to work up to that and maybe convince a, a few people to, to travel, to make reservations with me and travel with me in New Mexico next summer. But this, you know, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, if you had zip, zip ahead, there's a way you can make me talk faster too if you want. Um, New Mexico, I, the, I did find a website that has every single state and whether or not they have a annual parks pass for the state parks and what the deal is. And no one, not one state comes close to the incredibly massive deal that um, New Mexico State Parks has. And this is the deal. that is, As a non-resident, you pay $225 for an annual pass. If you're a resident and you're an old fart like me and you're 62 or older, it's only $100. I think it's, if you're under 62 and you're a resident, I think it's 180. But boy, if you're a New Mexico resident and you're paying $100 for this, wow. Because what does it do? Essentially, um, if you want to camp in sites in parks that don't have electrical or water hookups, then you use your pass. You don't get charged a daily rate for that. Now, there is every reservation you make, and the reservation maximum window is 14 days, because that's how long you can stay in a park. It's 14 days. If you want to come back to that park, you have to be out for six nights, six nights, six days. Then you can come back. But um, so you can figure, um, if you want to make reservations for all summer, you have to make it in 14-day blocks. And they charge you $12 for each 14-day block. Now, if you're not staying in hookup sites, electric or water sites, then that's all it costs you for two weeks is <coughs> $12 for your reservation fee. Now, keep in mind, 
if you change your mind and cancel, they're going to keep that reservation fee. So keep that in mind. But $12 for 14 days, uh, my math says that's less than a dollar a day. Now, if it's summer and even in the mountains, if you if you want your you have an air conditioner and you want your creature comforts, it's going to cost you. You ready for this? Four dollars per day for electric. So that comes out to, with the twelve dollar fee and the four dollars times fourteen, um, uh, sixty eight dollars for two weeks. For a, four weeks, for a month. Think about it like this: This is rent for a month, including electricity. It's sixty-eight and sixty-eight is one hundred and thirty-six dollars. Where are you going to stay anywhere that you don't own for one hundred and thirty-six dollars for four weeks? One hundred and thirty-six dollars for essentially a month. Now, to be fair, months aren't twenty-eight days; they're either thirty or thirty-one. Well, February. You, you come clean in February, but every other month you've got, you know, what, an extra, you know, $8. So anyway, that's not my point. My point is these deals are incredible. It, it's just, it's mind boggling. And so what you'd want to do, if you want to do in the summer, you want to map out, and I think, it, double check this, it's six months ahead of time. You can start making your reservations because they fill up fast, 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 fast. Now, I didn't do that. I didn't do it until July I started. And so I worked really hard. I looked and I made myself a list of um, parks that are above 7,000 feet in elevation. And I, I did find two-week blocks in the middle of the summer. So it's doable. But as my br friends Deborah Dickinson and frugal RV gal will tell you, if you want the good spots, the good parks, you need to plan ahead. But I'm proof that you don't absolutely have to. So um, I would be shocked if I don't do this again next summer in, instead of doing camp hosting. Um, it's just, it's too good a deal to give up. Uh, so today I am going into Chama and there was a previous video on Chama that really didn't do too well. People didn't seem too interested. But Chama's a really cool place. They've shot a lot of movies in the Chama area. And one of them, the most notable one, if you remember Butch Cassidy in The Sundance Kid, the scene where they jump off the cliff to escape, um, that's very close to Chama, that, that actual cliff and everything. So that, that's pretty cool. And online you can see all the movies that have been shot in the Chama area, and that's that's pretty good. And they have the uh, steam locomotive train tour that takes off from Chama and goes up into Colorado, and it goes 12 miles per hour on a steam engine up through the mountains, and um, it's a little pricey. There's three classes of service. Um, and I picked the second one, the one between the like coach and the deluxe, and that cost me $200. Sounds like a lot of money, but it's an all day trip. Um, actually happens, um, you can either take the train from here up to Colorado and take a bus back, or take a bus up to Colorado and then take the train back, and the second one is what I'm doing. I'm doing it Thursday, and I, it costs a little over $200 with tax, and that includes some, I think, a, a little lunch and some snacks and assigned comfortable seating with a view on a window with a view. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And I asked them specifically, one, is it OK if I film it and uh, put it on YouTube with a monetized channel? And they said, yeah, absolutely. We love that. So you'll be seeing a video on that. I'm really excited about that. Frugal RV gal and Deborah Dickinson did that, and one of the things they said to me when you go up there, spend the money. You won't regret it. it it's worth it's worth every penny. So I absolutely trust them, and I trust all the reviews that I've read about it. So that's pretty exciting. So today, um, I left Dottie at home because I want to do a few things, getting out of the car, and you know the 
I like leaving her in the car when it's hot and I leave the engine running and lock it, but I don't like leaving it for too long because all someone has to do is smash my window and they can drive me, the, my, my dog and my truck away. So I left Dottie at home in the air conditioning with George. And so I have a couple of things I want to do. Um, I forgot to pick up uh, Dottie's vegetables for her um, meals that I'm going to have to make new meals in a few days. So I need canned vegetables for that. I need some, I'm running out of uh, sugar for my coffee. And you know what, there was one other thing, and I can't remember what it was, but I have a list of three things. Plus in the grocery store, they had a fishing section, and I want to see what I might need out of the fishing section, because I, I want to find some places to fish around here. Um, that may not be today. And I'm also doing laundry in Chama. I've got my dirty laundry with me. And I'd like to go to a restaurant, get something to eat, and uh, maybe get a big meal so I can take some to go to um, maybe have for breakfast and dinner. Uh, I mean for lunch and dinner. That's one of the things that um, uh, I'll never be known as frugal RV guy, but I do respect being frugal and I try to do it in my own way. And one way is um, to, when I go out to eat, I order um, knowing that this is going to be two meals. So if I'm spending 20 bucks or $22 with tip or $25 with tip, I know it's costing me $12.50 per meal, which feels a lot more reasonable than spending $25 on one meal, which seems excessive because you can have a perfectly decent meal if you use your head and cook yourself um, for far less well, certainly far less than $25, and also far less than $12. What I encourage, if you're interested in that, I encourage you, Frugal RV Gal is doing a series of um, videos from shopping, to cooking, to presentation, to eating, um, and uh, she, even in her first video, you gotta see this, she um, goes through, you know, how the grocery stores have these specials all the time that they're um, advertising and she even warns you just because it's in this advertisement doesn't mean you're getting a good deal you need to be smarter than the advertisers you need to know what a good deal and it's really fascinating stuff and let me tell you firsthand I have been I have been blessed to eat um, her and Deborah Dickinson's cooking and oh my god they cook so well and uh, what frugal earns her name frugal rv gal because um i think we're all going to be shocked on how good these meals are going to be that she's going to show us and how um inexpensive it is and for I, I know for a lot many many people that live this lifestyle saving money is so important and you know this old saying that um I guess I understood when I was a kid, but I never really took it into my heart. A penny saved is a penny earned. And it's so true. Um, if, you, if you work a job, right? Let's say you work a job that pays $15 an hour. And if you're lucky after taxes, what do you get? You get you know, taxes and benefit, you know, paying benefits and things like that. If you're lucky enough to have benefits, maybe you end up in your pocket $10 for an hour's work. And these days I have a simple meal at McDonald's and with tax, $10 is, it's gone, right? So I'm, I'm eating my simple McDonald's meal and it's costing me an hour's worth of labor to do that. Conversely, if I can save $10 on a meal, that's worth an hour of my working time, isn't it? So $10 saved is a dollar, and no one taxes your savings. There's no tax on savings, right? So if I save $15, the government isn't going to take FICA, um, 
Medicare and income taxes out of that. It's tax free. So saving money and still being comfortable and enjoying life is so important. So that's why I'm so excited about that series. So anyway, that's enough babbling on the road. Um, I will catch you again and I'm going to walk around Chama and show you some stores and hotels and stuff and uh, really get you a really nice flavor of Chama. And I'm also going to have a meal and I will show you the restaurant and I'll review the meal. So y'all take care. Well, here we are in Chama and this is sort of the railroad yard and off in the distance there you can see the the depot where I'm going to be leaving on my tour on the steam engine uh, on Thursday. You look off to here there are a lot of old locomotives and let's zoom in there's a very old number 492 steam engine there. You can see the parking lots full because they're obviously running trains up to Colorado today. And Here's the, they call it the village of Chama. This is Main Street. And up here, I'm gonna try to go in and I'll ask them if it's okay to record inside, but it's the Foster's Hotel. Okay, I went in and asked for permission and they said it was okay to record. So we're, first I'm gonna show you the bar. We have a pool table. And then here's the lobby, and up there, I believe, are the hotel rooms. And the restaurant, dining room, is right here. It's, it looks pretty busy. People look pretty happy, so I bet the food's pretty good. And I noticed quite a few of the restaurants are closed. It's a Sunday but we'll look at them anyway. This is the Boxcar Cafe across from the, the train depot, the train yard. There's the Chama Station Inn. And we're up to, this is the Cumbre Shopping Mall. It certainly looks like <clears throat> that's open. The shops are open. And we'll go in and ask if it's okay. to film. Hi, is it okay to film your shop for my travel channel? Sure. sure. Here we have the first shop here. We'll show you what's in here in case you see something that might interest you. Now these fish plates, this is something my dad used to collect many decades ago. He'd be very interested in those fish plates. Is there anything you wanted to say in camera about your shop to entice people that come through town to come see you? Here most of the time through the summer and come here to cool off when it gets hot in your state. Yeah, well, I thank you for allowing me to film. It's a very nice looking shop, and I think I got a shot of just about everything. So if someone's interested, uh, yeah, if we look. anybody needs any pictures, I do a lot of these paintings. On the oh, board. you do the paintings? Yeah. They're wonderful. Well, thank you. Oh, I particularly like the one that looks like a smallmouth bass. Large Largemouth bass. I should have noted that by the large mouth in the picture. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Have a nice day. You too. Is it okay to film your shop for my yeah, travel channel? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> now this one's going to take a little bit more time because there's so much to look at here. There's some older vintage books, some pictures, 
that are certainly from the 1940s. Is that a picture from 1900 up there of a school classroom with a teacher? Oh, the date on that okay. One is that I see. woman is my great grandmother, and she didn't get married till 1903. Oh, wow. I bet you'd have trouble giving that up. Sorry about that. Yeah. So we have some interesting looking dolls. Hats. Oh, some DVDs and even some old VHS types. And all kinds of hats. My bet is you will save some money here versus buying brand new stuff in more touristy places. That's kind of a cool jacket she has up there. Um, there was a guy in just before me that I think he was considering buying that jacket. So if you're interested in me on YouTube, do you want to talk about your store a little bit? Um, sure. My name is Carrie Reynolds. Uh, this is my shop, Rabbit Peak Thrift and Collectibles. I've always been interested in thrift shops, and I decided to open this up. Most of the goods in the store, to start with, were family collection. Oh, wow. And a lot of it was donated to me by extended relatives, my mom's older brothers, all of whom are in their 80s, went through their basements and dug out stuff and said, here's for your shop. Well, that's pretty exciting. I, <laughs> this is the kind of shop I really like because there's just so much to see. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, for my, for my uh, subscribers, I'm trying to move really slow so they can see everything. Oh, right. I know. I've got stuff everywhere. I'm <laughs> Oh, it's just, it's amazing. I, mm -hmm. I keep seeing new stuff every time I turn around. Right. But um, if uh, I encourage, most of my subscribers are full-time RVers. Oh, okay. And I'm trying to, I'm doing a whole New Mexico park series this summer. And mm -hmm. um, I bet more than one of them will follow in my footsteps. So hopefully to help your business. Well, I appreciate you stopping in. I do try to keep things on hand for the RVers that are like uh, small kitchen appliances. Mm -hmm. You know, um, miscellaneous household goods that you might not have with you or that has broken down and you need another one of. You know, I've run into those RVers already. I, I was able to provide them with some things last summer. And I bet you're a good source of local information. I try to be. Yeah, yes. That's, that's great. <laughs> so my channel is Travels with Dottie. Okay. Dottie's my dog, D O T T I E. All right. And uh, you'll see this video probably by tonight. All right, I'll okay. go look for it. Thanks All right. a lot. Thanks for letting me film. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate you stopping in. Well, I'm going to give it one more look through oh, yeah, to make sure you've seen everything. And, you know, having um, this mostly family stuff is pretty special. Pretty special. All righty. I don't know what's down here, maybe nothing. I thought, you guys, you can do all the Google searches you want on an area, but the best source of information are always going to be people that live here. Um, so the shop owners, valuable source of information, and all I say is if you come in and get information from them, Buy something. Support them. Is it okay to film inside for my travel channel? Let's ask the owners. I, oh, oh, are those the owners? Yes. I'll ask them because I always ask for permission. 
Ladies, is it okay to film your business for my travel channel on YouTube? Oh, not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. I was excited, and my viewers will be excited about ice cream. Oh, the ice cream. So that's ice cream, and you have cheesecake and pies, and all in a menu. Let me get the menu up there. And I'm trying to keep the shy lady off the camera. <laughs> I thought it was you. I thought you were the shot. But it's also, like they said, okay, also a hotel. How much is it, like, on average to stay the night? 99. 99. That's very nice. How exciting. And there is also your train memorabilia upstairs. Oh, there is. Oh, I'll go upstairs and check it out. Thank you. and little paintings and train-related stuff. And this is pretty cool. There's a balcony. Look at this. Look at the view from this nice balcony. Shows you the village. something I didn't notice. I'm going to zoom in on it. There's the Friends of Chama Library. So here's a business. I don't know exactly what it is, but we're about to find out if we don't get one over. It's a what? A bat. A bat? Yeah. On the wall? Or... Oh, I see it. Here's the bat. Check it out. Is it okay if I film in here for my travel channel and promote your business? Sure. Oh, look at all this. Um, I have a Travels with Dottie is my YouTube channel, and uh, I full time RV and I do YouTube. I love it. So tell me about your shop and who you are. I'm Annie, but it's not my shop. Okay, it doesn't matter. I know. So the owner, one of the two owners, is across the street at our sister store. Which one is that? It's called Off the Rails. It's right across the road. And Laura is over there, one of the owners. And she and Michelle bought this store a year ago and bought that one this spring. I wonder if it's the one I was just in. It was a lady that had a little shop that had like family heirlooms and stuff. No, 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 it's directly across. All right, well, I'll hit that one next. Okay. I'll hit that All one right. next. So, so tell me about this shop. This shop is uh, mostly clothes. It's a boutique, and it's kind of off the grid for, um, thanks for coming in. Yes, ma'am. For Chama, it's pretty uptown because we don't have shopping here. Right, and right. And now we have several options. So we have truffles. If you like chocolate, okay. we have a local artist, or artist author, who is also a docent on the train. And um, I'm taking the train on Thursday. Oh, I'm taking it Friday. Dang. All right. Well, in, it's you're in for a treat. I, I understand that. Yeah. And I didn't do the most expensive. I didn't do the cheapest. I did the one in the middle. All right. So are you going to Osier for lunch and back? I'm taking a bus up and then okay. coming back. Okay, you're taking a bus to Antonito. Yes, and then And coming. then you ride the train all the way back, which yeah. is, I think, the best scenario. Oh, good, good. Because the first half before lunch is all um, very historic and geology and volcanoes and ice, ice um, bergs colliding and stuff like that, vol volcanoes. And then when you come after lunch, 
you're going to get into forest. Okay. And the train crosses the road, uh, the state line, 11 times. 64 miles, took 1,100 men um, and 400 teams of horses and mules. Nine months to the day to lay that track. Wow. Well, your shop, I think I'm going to show the clothing because most of my subscribers, believe it or not, are women my age and older. So okay, I think cool. they'll be interested. So I'm going to show the All clothes. Right, go okay. For it. And there's a whole room behind the big right. blue R over here. Okay. My, my, uh, lady subscribers i'm going to try to show you this is very unusual for a small town yes. um i used to work for neiman marcus way oh, way back I, I was familiar in the day so if you go a little forward to your left there's a little cubby hole back there okay 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 guys there is a lot of beautiful i mean clothing that i would like to see on um ladies it's i think it's very um, I would say it is Western elegance is how I would describe what I'm seeing here. <clears throat> yeah, I think you ladies will very much enjoy visiting in here and maybe um, buying some wonderful clothing. And there's some for you male guys. There are a lot of t-shirts in here. Well, thank you very much. I'm pretty sure I got most everything. Thank you. I RV'd a long time. So this is the Elkhorn restaurant on Google. It's called the Elkhorn Cafe. And I usually have pretty good instincts about where to find good local food. And I, I think I'm going to do pretty well here. We'll see. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Thank you. Are we on the list? I presume. So it was so busy, and I'm by myself. I offered to sit on this little bar, which is just comfortable enough. Very friendly people in here. And as I came in, there were people leaving, raving about the food. So I think my instincts are going to be pretty good. Guys, this is the steak quesadilla, and you can see I've already taken a bite out of the first one, and it is really, really good. And um, I'll give you a little bit of a warning. If you come on a Sunday or a Monday that when they're very busy, um, you need to be willing to wait, and it's absolutely worth the wait. It was about oh, 35, 40 minutes, but worth every minute. Alternatively, if you come on other days and you see the parking lot full and there are a lot of people in here, count in the same way. Um, they can only go so fast. So come in, relax, have a cup, have a glass of sweet tea like I did, and it'll be worth it. So I have finished my grocery shopping. Um, one of the things I did get I'm excited about, I got a copy, Deborah and Frugal. Um, <laughs> I got a, a hummingbird feeder because I was so enthralled with the hummingbirds at their campsite. So I got one of those. I got some veggies for Dottie's dog food and some sugar. And I think that's it. That's all I really needed. And um, oh, one thing I wanted to mention about that restaurant is I noticed on the way out, they are closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So they are open Thursday through Monday. And I mentioned um Sunday and Monday are especially busy days, and if it is busy those days or any other day, count on to the 30 to 40 minute wait when they're packed for your food, but it is so worth it. I mean, this um, steak quesadilla was so big, for lunch I had a quarter of it. So I'm taking uh, three quarters of it home, 
and it'll be dinner tonight and probably lunch tomorrow. So, and it cost me with tip, I think $24. Um, so I definitely can get three meals out of it. So that's $8 per meal. Um, and that's my version of frugal. And I'm sitting outside. There's a, um, coin operated laundry in town. Um, you'll just have to look it up when you're here. It's not on the main street. It's a little outside of town, um, near the school, so you'll have to go through a little residential district to get to it. But it's it's once you find it on Google, you'll you'll get it. Um, it's a little expensive. It only has the big big machines, so it's like four dollars or four fifty for a load of uh, laundry. Um, I like the ones that are the small machines because I usually have a small load, and they're like a dollar fifty or two dollars at the most. But um, and still, you, you beggars can't be choosers. Uh, so I think I'm going to wrap things up here. Um, right after this, I'm going to head home and put my stuff away and let Dottie out and hang out uh, this evening and relax. I will see you all on the next video. Take care.